Ain't the Lord great tonight? Yeah. Thank you. We're going to sing a couple of songs, and uh, then I'm going to slow it down just a little bit and teach a while. And, uh, have you ever just got to that place where you know a scripture, and you've heard it preached and preached, and then I don't want you to read it, and uh, you don't get out of it? what somebody else pulled out of it. And you get to read it, and you take it for granted, and your word is just, and then something just don't sound right. Then you read it again, and then all at once, the light shines on it, and you understand it. I'm glad I understand that there is just one God in all, above all, through all. God is good. When the Bible comes to town, I want to be in the midst of it. I know of all the circumstances. I know the last few weeks or months or whatever. But I'm, but I'm still alive, and I still believe in revival. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. All right, let's sing this song. Holy rumbling, growing every day, waking up the church and causing everyone to pray. There's great anticipation, cause the words been getting round. There's gonna be rejoicing when revival comes to town. I'm not talking about a two day, three day, five day, seven day church event. No preacher's gonna preach in the choir, it's gonna sing it. Gotta be heaven sent. hearts are hungry, wherever souls are dry, wherever true believers call on God, He hears their cry. That's when the Spirit of the Lord ignites the barren ground. It's gonna burn like fire when revival comes to death. I'm not talking about a two-day, three-day, five-day, seven-day church event. No preacher's gonna bring it or choir's gonna sing it. It's gotta be heaven sent. With showers of blessings, God's glory coming down. There's gonna be rejoicing when revival comes to town. Okay, that's our song. Sometimes we feel like singing tonight. I don't. I want to just go ahead and teach right. a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, that's the reason why I stopped. I said, no, let's don't do that. Let's do it. We're saying a little later. Let's, let's do something else. And uh, go with me to John, 15th chapter. John, the 15th chapter. All right. And, uh, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that heareth not, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Do you understand it now? Did you hear me? Yeah, okay. Then if I ask somebody to explain it, I wonder what they'd say. Jesus said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he take away. He take it away. Is that what your Bible says? Okay. Tell me what it means. What would you say that means, brother? You read it. What does it mean? That's what a lot of folks thought. 
That's what, when you read it, it kind of sounds that way. But the, and what they do, they rely on that last, on those words, taken away. And that's what they, 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 they post it off. And that's the highlight of, of what they think it's talking about. But there's another word before that. Did you catch it? Did you catch it when I read it, the first words? It said, the word in me. The highlight of that scripture is not taken away. The highlight of that scripture is in me. So I'm going to preach a while, or teach a while on, uh, if I can be like this, uh, renewed or mildewed. Renewed or mildewed. Now you be seated. You're either going to be renewed or you're going to mildew. How many people here raise gardens? How many raise gardens? You worked in a garden. Okay, I want you to think of it just for a moment as I teach this. First of all, there's some questions here. To say that you don't bring forth fruit, you're going to get tossed out. That's a very troubling thought. Huh? No fruit, no good. No can be Christian. <laughs> no, he no good. He gonna got no fruit. So we're going to Cast them away. But that ain't what that scripture means. I got your attention now, don't it? That's not what it is about. Because in the next verse, in the next verse, you've got another phrase. And it comes in and talks about being clean. Ye are clean. Now, why would he want to cast them, throw something away that was clean? Did you get that? But many a time, now I want, you, I want you to get this, many a time in the Word of in the New Testament, down through the pages, you're going to find scriptures. And I want you to get this right because I've heard a lot of people preach that and they preach about throwing it away. If you don't bear fruit, I'm going to throw it away. And they'll use this scripture to back up, or kind of back up what they're saying. If you don't bear fruit, I'm getting rid of you. He's going to come and throw you away. I've seen it. I thought that was the way it was for a long time, but, but, it, but that's not true. It said, in him. In me or in him. Now, all through the word of God, I brought it back. You're going to find uh, the, these sayings in uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians. You're going to find out, you're going to hear words like this, in Christ. If you be in Christ, here again, you've got in him, in Christ. If you're in Christ, you're going to be a new creature. You're not going to be the same because you are in him. So why would he want to throw you away if you are in him? Are you understanding that now? Why then would you want to throw something away that's in him? It's a very troubling thought sometimes. So we got to find out what's going on here. We got to listen to it in order to understand it. You've got to go and do a little study about farming. You've got to go to somebody that's worked in the vineyard. You know what I'm talking about? You've got to go to somebody that knows how to raise a garden. The word take, 
taken away means, it's the word they translated hero. Hero is the word they use and translated take away. The same word hero also is in different books when he said to take up the, the remaining of the fish. Same word means to take up. Okay, now you got a word take up in another place. I mean, he said, lift, be lifted up. And if he be lifted up, I mean, it's the same word, arrow. So you got the word arrow here that means to be lifted up or called up. And all the words, there's something going on here. Why would he throw somebody away? Let's go to the vineyard. Let's just go and ask somebody that works in a vineyard because that's what he's doing. He's talking about the vineyard. I am the branch. You're the branches. I'm the vine. You're the branches. So let's go. Let's ask somebody uh, that is a works in the garden. Let's ask somebody that's, that's more acquainted with what to do. In every vineyard, you got new branches that come out. Those branches has a tendency to follow along or get along the ground. Are you listening to me? How many of you ever went and got planted tomatoes and all the words you found yourself have to lift them up? You have to tie them up. Are oh, you understanding more about it now? People don't raise your garden, can't understand that. But what it is, the vineyard and the vine dresser that takes care of the vineyard, they take a bucket of water and they go through the vineyard and they find those vines that are low to the ground, that's shaded, and are, if they stay there, they will become mildewed, that the dirt and the dust is upon them. Are you understanding now? And so somebody goes through there and they have a bucket of water. They wash those vines off. They clean them up and then they lift them up and they tie them. The same progress that we do when in gardening of tomatoes or whatever, when they get too big, we tie them to a stake or we tie them to a rope, we tie them to something where they won't fall over on the ground. Therefore, they're lifted up. And they asked the vine dresser, what do you do when you find those vines that's like that? Do you cut them off? Do you throw them away? He said, no. We lift them up. And when we lift them up, amen, and then we move them away from the shadows, they get in a place where the sun is, and they become very prosperous. In other words, hallelujah, if you stay down below and if you drag it in cracks, I mean, there's going to be danger there. But we, the Bible said this, if you remember the word of God, it said some planted and some watered. I mean, what do you do? We take the water. We take the water of the word. And we begin to water the saints. And we begin to water the new vines. And after a while, that one that wasn't prosperous becomes very prosperous because we didn't throw them away. We didn't cut them off. We raised them up. He ain't no good, throw him away. No. Wash him off. Lift him up. Let the sun shine on him. Come on, let the sun shine on him. Let the sun shine on him. Now every time you read it again, you're gonna get to the place after a while, every time you read it, instead of saying throw it away or cut off, because the word here, a hero, does not mean cut off. It means it has a tendency of lifting up. It's a, it's a vine dresser that's getting down there where they're at, the muddy ones, the ones that's not been fruitful, raises them up, ties them off, and they become very fruitful. How many of you in the sitting here today have ever went through a time when you wasn't fruitful? All of us. And then the, the vine dresser came by, preached.
preached that message or sung that song instead of him kicking you, no matter if you had dirt all over you, no matter if you was mildewed a little bit, but he looked at you and said, hey, we're going to raise you up. We're going to raise you up. We're going to raise you up. We're going to pull you and tie you. I'm glad today that the, the vine dresser, he didn't cast me away. He lifted me up, tied me. In my time of unfruitfulness, he raised me up, and tied me. But there came a day when I became very fruitful. Well, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's understanding that. Well, if I could just get so and so to be fruitful, hang in there. Hang in there. Time up. Somebody do this with me. Go, time up. Reach out and raise them up. Hook them in there. Don't let them go. Keep your prayers going. Come on, keep your water bucket full. Keep your joy going. And then the day comes when that one that was down there that was going to be mildew in, now they have been renewed. The song says, renew me in the Holy Ghost. Renew me in the one that I love the most. I got to be, I got to tell you, we got to raise it up. I, didn't, I ain't going to preach long tonight, so don't get nervous. But we've got to raise them up. Which one you'd rather see? A vine cut off or a vine that produces? It don't take much effort to reach down. Here's what the key is. First of all, in order to get down, they've got to get down on their knees. They got to get down over tender hands, gentle hands, and raise it up. Then take the time to tie it. You don't just say, Lord, bless them. You say, Lord, produce. Lord, let them see your sunshine. Let them see your power. And then all the ones, when they start growing, when they start going. And I went to a funeral the other day, and a, and a preacher walked up to me, he's pastoring a church now, and he said these words. He said, he said, I got every one of y'all's tapes. And he says, I still, we still listening to them. I said, and I remember when he was down there and lived in that little trailer, and I thought, if he listened to all those songs that my wife sung, that might have been what lifted him up and tied him, and now he's preaching. He's a pastor. I thought, you never know. But what if I just had songs that tore down, songs that rip apart? What if I heard beer-drinking songs? What if I had songs of no, that it would kill him? But I don't want that. I want to see a production Ooh, I'm tired of fooling with that one. No, I'm not tired of fooling with them. I'm ready to raise them up. Revival comes when we start raising. New growth starts. And I'm back on that new garden. And that new growth is when we start raising people up. We, I know a preacher friend that had trouble. And because of the trouble, he just literally just destroyed any chance of anything ever being good. But it killed him too. He was destructive. He was very destructive in his, in his actions and, and what he said. He was not loving. He was not caring. I was stirred a few days ago when somebody told me about an individual doing something and they said, and they said, what do we do now? And the elder lady said, love them more than they've ever been loved. Oh, 
They don't need us to talk about all their failures. They don't need us to talk about all the things they've done wrong. They need us to look at the vine and lift them up. Lift them up above the shadows. Set their feet on the solid rock. I want you to know something. God is the one. When he saw me, he didn't cut me off, but he reached down his hand. Amen, Father, that I could reach down. He reached down his hand, and he lifted me up. How about you? Have you ever been there? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. I'm like those that come around and say, he that is without fault or he that is without sin, let him be first to cast the stone. And all the mirror, they, the mirror was turned to them and they looked at it and they all walked away because not a one of them could stay. They was perfect. Not a one of them could say they're all right 100%. Uh, you know what I'm telling you? But what I'm trying to say is, we, I am not one to condemn and I don't want to be one to, to crucify somebody. That's not my job. But I'm the one carrying the water bucket. I'm the one that's carrying the little bag. I want to wash off the vines and lift them up. Lift them up. And when we start lifting them up, what do you mean lift them up? Lift them up in prayer. Lift them up on your knees. But my kids don't do dress like I think they should. I just simply look at them and say, they may look like that now, but they won't look like that later. Because prayer changes things. I still believe in old-fashioned prayer. I'm not going to leave them there. I ain't going to leave them there to mildew. you. But by praying, church, by beginning to pray for this community and by praying for people around you, you find somebody that don't look too good, raise them up in prayer. Find somebody that ain't doing too good, raise them up in prayer. It may be the one you raise it up becomes the most productive in this church. Who never thought a little baby like me laying on a Pentecostal pew would ever be a preacher? Who never thought that? Not that little snotty old kid. But God. But God. But God. But God, I came. Instead of being thrown away, he raised me up. Everybody said, there was folks who said, he'll never be anything. He'll never amount to nothing. He told him, I don't know what I was. Uninterested. No care. But down deep, there was something growing. And God said, I ain't going to throw him away. I might have been embarrassed to preach her when I went out to eat with him. And he bought me a simple hamburger. Or I might have embarrassed the preacher who put me in his truck and took me out to the farm with him. And I thought, man, that was great. Just a little kid. Little did I know later on that I'll be a preacher like the one I went with. But somebody in the midst of it all said, don't cut him off. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's lift him up. Lift him up. Because if he stays there, or if she stays there, and if you're low in God, and you don't be where you're supposed to be, you're not going to be fruitful. Not down there. Well, I, I can't. I'm so, I, I hate it when somebody tells me, I'm so weak, I'm so weak, I'm so weak. I don't know if I'm making it or not. When they start saying words like that, I wanted to stop them in their track. You're pointing in the wrong direction, ma'am. You're pointing in the wrong direction. You're pointing down. If you stay there, you will mildew. 
but let me turn it around. I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to tie you. I'm going to tie you to the church. I'm going to tie you with a purpose. I'm going to tie you with good works. I'm going to tie you with a string of hope. And I'm going to way back the foliage and I'm going to let the sun shine on you. And now they no longer say I'm so weak and they no longer say that I don't know what I'm making or not. They're saying I'm going up, I'm going up and I'm not going down. And all because somebody took the time to raise them up. Oh, Lord, I could have never been a preacher if God hadn't worked a miracle because I was bashful. I know y'all can't remember. (laughs) Y'all have no idea that I was bashful. It's hard for me to talk to people. I was thinking about, I was thinking about the little fellow back here just kind of look at him halfway and he wants to duck behind his daddy's arm. Yeah, uh, can you believe I was that way? Only worse. Somebody come to the house, and I'd hide behind the door. I didn't want to see nobody. But something happened. Something happened. Now I can talk to about anybody. I can talk with anybody, and I don't want to hide behind the door no more. But what if God hadn't changed me? What if God? When I went to that camp meeting to preach that first time, went to the camp meeting down in Laurel, Mississippi. About 50 preachers there and me and this other fellow sitting on, on the deal. I'm shaking in my shoes. I was supposed to testify, and I knew they was going to call me to testify. And sure enough, they did. I forgot who it was, who my pastor was, and I forgot who I was. But Anderson told me later, he said, son, you done a good job. You didn't tell him where you was from. You didn't tell him who you was. I was so bashful, and I prayed, and I fasted about that. I knew I couldn't be, I was down too low on that vine. Had the wrong direction. But something happened. I went on that fast. It was during a time when I was taking care of a church. I went on a fast, and I told the pastor, I said, I won't eat until you get back. But he didn't tell me he was going to be gone three weeks. <laughs> but I kept my word. And somebody came by one time, and they found me in the church praying and crying and crawling. Next time I went to the same place, I was nervous. I was shaking, but something had changed. And the other little fellow, kind of new like me, he said, I'm nervous. I said, I'm scared to death. Then I started to get up behind that pulpit at that time. I knew he was going to call us, and he said, let them folks sing. Somebody else was taking care of it. And Brother, Brother Martin Sellers said, hey, let them sing. Well, I got the singing. We got the shouting and rolling in the floor. I didn't have to say nothing. <laughs> but when I got off of the floor, I was different. I lifted up. God lifted me up. You see, there's somebody here that God wants to lift you up. He wants to make it where you can just be fruitful, where you can become the most outspoken for the kingdom of God. How many people has got the Holy Ghost under our ministry? I don't know. And how many people got the Holy Ghost under the people that got the Holy Ghost? I don't know. I really don't want to know, but I'm going to tell you this. What if I'd stayed down low? 
What if I kept getting down there until I plumb got mildewed and I, and I could never get renewed and there wouldn't have been no more souls saved and my family, come on, uh, my wife wouldn't be saved today because there's something about it. But instead of all that, instead of being mildewed, I became renewed in the Holy Spirit. I want us to stand right now and raise our hands and say, God, renew me in the Holy Ghost. Renew me by the power of your Spirit. Renew me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, come on. Renew me in the Holy Ghost. I don't want to mildew, but I want to renew. I said, I don't want to mildew, but I want to renew. I said, I don't want to mildew, but I want to renew in the Holy Ghost. I want to be able to tell somebody what I believe. I want to be able to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. I want to be able to tell somebody about what's good for them. I want to be able to tell somebody oh, there ain't no better life than living the way we live right now. They ain't no better. Renew me. Renew me. Renewed in the Holy Ghost. They're saying. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Renew me in the Holy Ghost. Renew me, it's what I need the most. Baptize me with the heavenly fire. Fill me with the new desire. Renew me in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Renew me in the Holy Ghost. Yes, renew me. I need the most. Baptize me with the heavenly fire. Fill me with the new desire. Renew me. Come on. In the Holy Ghost. Oh, renew me. In the Holy Ghost. Renew me. It's what I need the most. Baptize me with the heavenly fire. Fill me with the new desire. Renew me in the Holy Ghost. Oh, renew me in the Holy Ghost. Yes, renew me. It's what I need the most. Baptize me with the heavenly fire. Fill me with the new desire, renew me in the Holy Ghost. Come on, oh, renew me in the Holy Ghost. Oh, renew me, it's what I need the most. Baptize me with the heavenly fire, fill me with the new desire, renew me. In the Holy Ghost. Let's read a little bit more here. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken. And it said, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in a vine. No more can you except you abide in a vine. The verse 6 said, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. But if ye abide in me, are you hearing me? If ye abide in me, the only way to be cast away from him is not to abide in him. But if you are in him, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done. Oh, I need a touch of God. I need a blessing. You ask, and you shall receive. Come on. Oh, the shot word. Abiding in him. My soul is thirsty for heaven. I need a drink from the well of God. Renew me in the Holy Ghost. Oh, renew me in the Holy Ghost. Renew me. 
what I need the most. Baptize me with the heavenly fire. Fill me with a new desire. Renew me in the Holy Ghost. So, guess what? The word taken away does not mean he's going to cast you aside. It means he's going to lift you up. It means to be cleansed, lifted up, because you are in him. All right, come on. <laughs> and if you abide in him, and his word abides, and his word abides in you, He's going to take that vine. He's going to take that time. Oh, yes, all of us has been there close to the ground. Uh -huh. We've all had mud on us, yeah. dust on us. Yeah. But right before we started meal doing, here comes a preacher with a water bucket or a singer with a song. Dashes that water on that vine. Holy Ghost water. Holy Ghost water. Anointing, that's the reason why songs that are sung of the anointing, they break the yoke, they lift up, and they tie to that. Woo! Man, that's shouting words to me. You, have y'all got it? You probably ain't never heard nobody preach it like that, but you have now. Yeah. Lift it up. Lift it up. I want you to just do this for me. L lift me up, Lord. Lift me up, Lord. Rain on me, Lord. Wash me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Don't cast me away. Tie me to the vine. Tie me to the stake. Tie me, Lord. Woo. Look at somebody say, he lifted me. <laughs>